What's up everyone, my name is Aaron, this is Aaron's Aquatics. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to increase salinity, or at least my method to increase salinity inside a tank. Now this is not gonna be a heavily edited video. The whole purpose of this is to kind of give you a quick update. Um, it's kind of a new format that I'm trying. If you like it guys, let me know. The example that I'm gonna be using is my three quarantine fish that are upstairs. Now they're at 1.020 gravity, and my display tank is at 1.026. So I need to be able to get them up to salinity um, so that they don't die, right? That's the whole purpose. Uh, they've been through 30 days of quarantine. I don't want them to die because I'm an idiot and I want to rush this, so we're going to do this right. And for me in particular, I mean, you guys have seen my previous videos. You know that I've struggled a little bit with quarantine. I mean, hell, this is a 210 gallon, a six foot tank with three fish in it, okay? Like, check this out, right? Sorry, this, this, this is a point and shoot. It's not really meant to deal with the blues of the uh, aquarium. I mean, we've got Tanya right here, the cunt. Um, we've got my other clownfish and my Midas Blenny. Three fish, man. Look at this. That's ridiculous. That's absurd. So, I wanna be extra cautious about adding fish to my tank, making sure that they survive, making sure that there's absolutely no problems, which by the way, guys, this is kind of something I wanted to talk about. So I've named Tanya. Tanya is my Wyoming white clownfish. She bites me all the time. Actually, I stuck my hand in the tank earlier. I'm not sure how well. Yeah, there you go. That is Tanya. That was earlier today because I wanted to pick up a frag I accidentally knocked over. So clearly that was my mistake. I shouldn't have stuck my hand in the tank, right? That said, let's go upstairs. Let's look at the fish and I'll talk more about it in a second. All right, guys, we're upstairs at the second quarantine tank. Now, these guys have been in quarantine for now a little over 30 days. I have a two-tank process. There's tank one over there, which has a female bellus and the liar tail antheus. And then over here, we have the second quarantine, which has the male bellus, a orange back fairy wrasse, and in the back right there, you can see the long fin fairy wrasse. Now, they're all doing spectacular, guys. Man, the orange back fairy wrasse, is just such a marvelous looking fish. It's so beautiful. And then you have the star of the show, of course, is the male Bellis angel fish. He's very beautiful. He's got some blue teeth, blue lips, I guess, whatever you want to call it. So it's focusing really difficult because of the uh, crud on the inside of the glass, haven't really cleaned it. And uh, the, uh, the long fin fairy rice, you can't really see him in the back. I mean, he's a little bit shy and skittish, but when it comes to feeding, I mean, he's a boss. You know, actually, hold on, let me, let me see here. I've actually got my food right here. Let's see if, uh, first, let me see if I can do this one-handed. All right, here we go, guys. Time for food. All right, so I did feed them early. Oh yeah, of course. He's like, oh yeah, it's time to eat, guys. <laughs> Let's go, let's go. So what I wanna talk about is how I lower the salinity inside this tank. And guess what? I've already started. Some of you might already guess. I mean, this is really simple. I just really wanted to talk about it and give you an update. But before, let me, I'll go ahead and let them continue eating. So before, I have, I got a bunch of fish crap over here. So I've got this piece of kind of like skylight material. It uh, is a good way to kind of prevent light from getting through, but the whole purpose of this is to place this on top of the tank, right? So like this goes on top of this, and then I've got some basic egg crate material which sits on top of that, right? So this is to kind of give this some weight because this weighs absolutely nothing. Um, and then I put the light on top of this. So what this does is this prevents evaporation the, uh, the skylight material, because it's not porous. And then the egg crate is just kind of like a plot, like a kind of a thing I had on hand that just kind of fit. I was able to cut it to size. It kind of made sense, but you don't really need that. The whole purpose is to stop evaporation during a quarantine process so your salinity, your copper, everything doesn't change, right? So in that case, I've taken it off. My first method in increasing salinity inside either my quarantine tank or my reef tank is basic evaporation. Evaporation is amazing because it's a slow process. It keeps your fish safe from dramatic increases in salinity. Now, what I've been told, I'm not 100% on this, is that dramatic drops in salinity fish can handle a lot better than increases in salinity. That being said, in this particular case, we wanna take as much time as possible. And now that the top is off, right, the, uh, the, 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 the kind of like that, that light cover, the, the panel, um, we're allowing more of the water to evaporate directly out of the tank, and that's probably the slowest method that I can suggest. The second method that you guys can use to increase your salinity is through basic water changes. Now, I don't prefer this method as much, especially if you're in a quarantine 
tank situation. If you're running medication, um, anything like that, and you have to control how much is dosed inside your system, it makes it a little bit more complicated. But definitely, it's not. It's not. I don't think it's that much more difficult. Um, the, the the benefit of it is that it's completely controlled. You can test the water inside your bucket, your tr trash can, whatever you're using to hold your water, and you know exactly what's going inside your tank. If your tank is say at 1.020 like I am, and you want to increase it to 1.027, then um, what you can do is you can make sure your water is at like 1.023, right? There's going to be a difference there. There's some math. You can look it up online, but the point is, is that your end goal is to just slowly raise your salinity over time through a series of basic water changes. Now the reason I don't like that second method nearly as much is just some people don't want to do a huge amount of water changes. I mean, you got to use salt, you, you got to make RODI water, it's kind of a pain. Um, that's why I completely recommend the evaporation method and it's going to be the one that I'm going to be using. Um, and again, in my particular example, my uh, quarantine tank is at 1.020 and my reef tank downstairs is 1.027. I think it's six or seven, I got to go retest it, but the point is it's a big enough difference where I can't just pop and drop it inside my tank, um, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, I gotta think about what I'm gonna be doing in the future with my quarantine tank levels with salinity because it's kind of a pain. Uh, I, I need to look at the benefits basically of keeping it at a lower salinity um, versus uh, just matching it with my reef tank. But seriously guys, I can't tell you but seriously guys, I can't tell you how excited I am to get these fish in the tank. I mean, it's been like eight or nine months. I've only had three fish in the tank and I'll tell you, it was been pretty disheartening with my inability to get fish through quarantine. I mean, yeah, uh, I can keep expensive Acropora. I can manage uh, dosing calcium, alkalinity, magnesium in like minor amounts to make sure everything is perfect. Like I, it, over the last eight months, I found that keeping coral, especially some of the harder to keep ones, is easier than fish. And I'm kind of curious what your guys' opinion on this is. I mean, I know I make this more difficult for myself because I refuse to put in fish in my system after I went fallow for 76 days because of ick um, without going through a full quarantine process. Now, I've got the quarantine process in the description below because I am following um, a reef to reef member hot rocks method and I found some great success with, with it so far. So if you guys are interested, check it on the comment section below. If you don't want to deal with marine velvet, if you don't want to deal with ick inside of your tank, please check it out because it's definitely um, your, your key to success. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. Like I said, this is going to be a short, quick video, more of an update on the quarantine tank than really anything highly edited or formatted. Before I go, two quick things. First, are any of you guys going to Aquashella 2019 in Dallas, Texas? If you are, let me know. I'm going to be going. I've already got tickets. I've already got a hotel. I'm super excited. I'm in Houston, right? I'm just going to drive over. It's going to be easy. The second one, next week, either Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll make it more solid. If you want to know more, follow me on Instagram. Um, uh, uh, I'm going to be doing a live stream on YouTube uh, and it's to talk about something that I've been planning for the last month or so and it is going to be exciting. I'm really excited guys. So if you want to tune into that, just please go ahead and check that out and that's it. My name is Aaron. This is Aaron's Aquatics. See you next time.